summer is fast approaching and I know a lot of you, like myself, want to head to the pool, head outside, perhaps get some color on that skin for the summertime. But let me tell you, a lot of people, we've been talking about the UV index, aren't really sure what it means. Well, I've got my bag of tricks here. I'm at Revere Hotel and we're on the rooftop and we're going to take a look at what you need to know about the UV index. Come on. So you miss the forecast, you're not sure what the UV index is, well, it changes throughout the day. So the easiest way to find out how much sun you're getting, take a look at your shadow. When you have a very short shadow, it means that your UV rays are high and your exposure is high. If it's longer, you have a better chance of seeing less exposure. Today, very high. Looks like I could quickly get burned. I gotta go and put some sunscreen on. planning on heading outside during a low UV index day, that's when the UV index number is between 0 and 2, you still need to protect yourself. Use an SPF of at least 15 and you want to apply that every two hours. Also, make sure you protect your eyes. Those UV rays can still affect that and that's why you need sunglasses before you can sit back and relax. Good. That was good. Remind me in a blizzard next winter of this moment. Getting a little later in the morning, the UV index is rising. We're now in the moderate stage, so our UV index is between three and five. Good thing I've already got my suntan lotion on. I've already got my glasses, so I'm protecting my eyes. Now you need to cover up. Get yourself a fabulous hat. There you go. <laughs> they would have picked that cabana over there in the corner. You ready for your debut? I'm so ready. When the UV index is between 6 and 7, you have a high risk of getting exposure from the sun. So not only do you want to wear your protective clothing, have your hat and glasses, you want to be underneath the shade, especially during the peak times between 10 o'clock in the morning and 4 p.m. in the afternoon. But if you do have to be underneath the sun, you want to make sure that you use an SPF of 30 or more and apply that every two hours. The only thing I need right now is to stay hydrated. Oh, thank you. Mm. Delish. Tell me when you're good. I'm good. Got it. I'm not. Three, two. Okay, so we think we're all covered up, but there's one more thing I want to point out. You can still get some of the sun's rays, even if you're in the water, as well as hiding underneath a beach umbrella. The sun can reflect those rays off of the beach sand. It also can happen in the wintertime off of snow. Let me show you. I'm going to take this white beach towel, pretend it's snow, and look at the reflection off of my face. <laughs> and see how the sun reflects onto my skin. So make sure you always are wearing sunscreen. I'm taking off my shoes. I'm putting my leg. I'm putting my feet in. Oh, no, it's perfect. When the UV index is very high to extreme, which is an eight or higher, and you can't get indoors like myself, that cover up you're wearing, don't get it wet because what was once an SPF seven, now, because a t-shirt is an SPF seven. Once it gets wet, now an SPF three. So you want to make sure you take all precautions. Lightning is no joke and lots of people have misconceptions about its power. 1,000 people in the United States and over 24,000 worldwide are struck by lightning each year, resulting in hundreds of deaths. So what can you do to not be a victim of a lightning strike? Take a look. We're at one of my favorite places in Boston, the Museum of Science. This is where we're going to learn everything you need to know about lightning. Come join me. We're going to head to the lightning room. <laughs> Such a fun room. Come on, are you excited? Oh, yeah. You have a lot of movement in the air and those clouds. They start rubbing up against each other. Anytime you have anything rubbing against each other, it can move some of that electric charge. So all that negative charge starts pushing apart. It doesn't want to be next to each other in that lightning cloud anymore. And so it jumps down to the ground. We see that as lightning. So the big machine, the Van de Graaff generator, is good at doing one thing and one thing only, collecting electric charge. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to everybody why it is safe to be in a car or your house, not because of the rubber tires like everybody thinks, but the fact that you're going to be surrounded by metal. So I'm going to go ahead, put my life on the line, and head into that big bird cage. All right, let's rock and roll. Don't worry, I'll keep you safe. I'm doing a waiver release they, just in case anything happens. They're not liable. All right, let's go in. Here we go. I'm not touching the cage. Not doing it. The reason we end up being safe, we're surrounded by metal, and metal is a much better conductor than a human body. Yeah. So most of the charge is gonna go to the metal and not to you. And now let's get down. <laughs> All's good. What was that like up there? Did I seem petrified? The hair's a little frizzy. Awesome show. Totally worth it. You should go check it out. There is no safe place outside during a thunderstorm, but you have to go about your plans. And if you are planning on heading to the beach, perhaps on a boat or just a walk along the Charles, there's the chance of thunderstorms. You need to have a plan. Know where your safe place is and how long it will take you to get there. Three, two, one. See that? I'm like, it's hot. I can all of a sudden, all this heat. <laughs> Lightning is six times hotter than the sun, and when it strikes, it can be deadly. You want to stay away from tall objects outside, and underneath a tree is not a safe place. You need to head indoors, away from plumbing, or go to your car. It's just as safe. Away from plumbing, this is a mess. Next, you want to keep an eye to the sky. You want to look for those threatening clouds and be on the lookout. When you see a flash of lightning, you can start counting until you hear thunder. For every five seconds, that means the storm is about a mile away. But of course, when thunder roars, you want to head indoors. Lightning can strike over 20 miles away from a thunderstorm, so there is no safe place outside. It can travel sideways and typically hits the tallest object. So if you can't get inside, crouch down on the ground in a compact ball. Also, stay away from water and metal because the current from lightning can travel long distances. Another interesting fact to know, if you do ever see anyone get struck by lightning, it is completely safe for you to go over and help them. The charge from the strike is gone in an instant. Sarah Robleski, Fox 25 News. Fall is a very special time around here, not only because, yes, pumpkin coffees are back, one of my favorites, but also the fact that Mother Nature paints this amazing canvas right outside our door. And thanks to our weather, it's some of the best around. So today we're going to get out of the office, good news, and we are going to head outdoors and uh, take a little hike. But um, yeah, wearing these bad boys, it's not going to happen, so I got to go change first. This is the glamorous part of TV. Yeah, right. I would love if someone did my hair and makeup. <laughs> I know you're rolling and it's completely fine. It's amazing all the different colors. It's really cool because it's not only the weather that's happening right now that changes the colors, it's also the weather that has already happened in the spring. And this is actually the perfect spot to explain all that. We are here. Where's the we are here map? See, no, you can't. <laughs> Imagine that leaves are like mini solar panels. They collect sunlight, produce food, as well as energy for the tree. But when we get to fall time, we lose some of that sunlight because the days get shorter. And when we lose the sunlight, we lose chlorophyll. Therefore, the green color fades away and it turns into this beautiful yellow and orange color that you see. The yellow and orange were there all along. It was just always masked by the chlorophyll. The red and purple hues you see in leaves, those are created a little bit differently. This is when the cooler temperatures of fall come into play. In fact, they combine with the sunlight to create a reaction with the leftover sugar or energy in the tree leaf, and that's what creates these vivid colors that we've come to love. What's up with that rock, Sarah? Look at that. I should have sat down on <laughs> Oh, look at that rock. And then, <laughs> look at the rock. <laughs> I decided to sit on. Oh. Of course, we don't want any big storms in autumn because heavy rain and strong winds will allow for some of the leaves to come down before they even turn. But we do want 
rainfall in the spring and the growing season because if we didn't, we could have a drought and that would cause the leaves to also drop before they changed color. There are so many ways to see the fall foliage across New England and it is just spectacular. But today, we're going up in the sky with high five ballooning. We're gonna hit trees. There are approximately 26 billion trees across New England, all different types, and that's why some of the fall foliage around here is so beautiful and different in colors. Yeah, I am a man, 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 man up, up in the, air. the fall foliage season is absolutely beautiful because of our weather conditions. Not only do we see a good amount of rain back in June, over 10 inches, but the recent weather conditions, beautiful sunny days, warm days, and cool but not freezing nights. And that's why we're seeing spectacular color across New England. Reach, reach, reach. <laughs> Look what I got. I did, I got one. That one with the pool, free car garage. I'll take that one. You go for a ride, you really don't know where you're gonna end. incredible way to see the fall foliage across New England and if you think it's too late to go leaf peeping it's not we still have a couple weeks left in fact the peak conditions occur at the end of October for southern New England Sarah Robleski Fox 25 News